Hi everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm going to give sort of like a, a top level view of like how we actually approach the um, the process and the timeline that France just mapped out, and like how we sort of like broke that down uh, with our first campaign. So like how we approached that week to week, and like sort of how we structured it. Um, so I'll kick us off th- sort of in week one. Um, so. Week one, you're still like in the the research and validation stage of this process. Um, So like for us to break that down, that meant the first few days spending a few days collecting and analyzing as many first and customer insights as possible. So really dive into any first hand information that you have, um, because that's all that forms like the foundation of your initial idea and your initial concept. Um, So really diving into that. And then um, what we did was come up with an idea we didn't necessarily have that like formalized on paper but what i did was have a meeting with your internal experts with the idea so the person that's probably closest to the customer in your company um flesh out that initial idea with them discuss it assess it and get the analysis that's all the initial validation from them Um, and then when you're confident after that meeting that's when you go away and build like the what of your campaign so like what you're going to bring to market what message you're going to bring to market so your concept your narrative all of your key messages go away and get that formalized on paper um and then at the end of the week one that um that concept that narrative all those key messages and meet with like either your campaign team or like the main stakeholders in the business who are involved um, and spend some time fully assessing those pieces so really go through the concept the narrative the messages and the main purpose of that meeting at the end of the week is just to get everybody as aligned as possible moving into week two so that there's no days. Um, you know exactly, um, everyone knows exactly what the plan is and what the idea is um, at that stage and what you're going to bring to market. And if there is anything else to tweak or there are changes to make, you've got time going into week two and you know exactly what needs to be done. Um, so that's all in a nutshell how we approach the week. But to give you an idea of like how that worked for us, um so like we knew the campaign like we wanted to target our marketing persona and we were gonna initially do that six to eight week period and evaluate that at the end of that time period um and for me what informs sort of like my thinking and my initial research is that if i had six to eight weeks to um to run a campaign um and for us to target our marketing persona i didn't want to cram campaign full of all the various marketing use cases and all the value that we bring marketers because there's a lot of things we can talk about I wanted to focus on promoting one thing really well and having one message that went out really clear and promoting that really well in that six to eight period period to give it the best chance of resonating um, for me what led my research is I needed to figure out what's the one message that would motivate the majority of our persona like what was the most common use case among our customers what's motivating marketing buyers to come to cognizant and seek us out Um, and i think for most marketers like the ideal situation would be that you'd be able to like especially in your research phase you'd be able to go out and like do like a few weeks of interviews with like your best customers analyze all that maybe run a huge survey Um, But in the real world, like often marketers don't have that sort of time and that sort of resource. So what we leaned into was the first party, uh, the first hand customer insights we had. And fortunately for us, we have all of our customer case studies uh, recorded in Gong. um, So all of our case study calls. Um, So I dived into those, listened back to all of our case studies um, with all of our marketing customers and analyzed all those responses. Um, And sort of what that overwhelmingly showed me was that the majority of customers coming to companies and marketing customers were motivated to to come to us because of our lead generation use case. So essentially data to give to your sales team or to fuel your campaigns. That was the main reason they were coming to us. Um, And that sort of firmed up the idea that that was what we wanted to promote. That's what we wanted to take to market. We wanted to promote this, uh, this lead generation use case. And during that research phase as well, a theme that we'd sort of like uncovered and we'd like we'd discussed was this idea of b2b marketing doesn't have to be boring you see a lot across linkedin you see a lot of marketers talking about it um so that was like a, an extra sort of like facet was like we've got this lead generation use case we've got this potential theme to set it against was there anything to link it together um, and it's at this point in week one you could start getting creative about like what your sort of concept actually sorry let me just go back what your concept actually is um, so we started thinking about those two things, and this was the concept that we come up with. It was called Screen Marketers from B2B Boredom. Um, and in a nutshell, the campaign is essentially 
linking that popular pain point, so B two B marketing being boring, with some of like the horrible, like antiquated, classic lead gen tasks that keep marketers from more productive work. So things like running gated content campaigns, syndicate content, uh, e blast to get leads, um, dealing with list vendors, stuff like that. Um, and the idea was we wanted to build up this idea um, that it's these tasks that are making B2B marketing boring so we can position Cognizant as a natural remedy to that because our on-demand data makes those tasks redundant and you can complete that task in a minute, get in contact for your sales team, get data for your campaigns. And that was the sort of like the idea, the concept, and we sort of fleshed that initial idea out. Um, and it was from there that we could sort of break that down into some key messages. This slide you can sort of see on the top, but our primary message really the, the main thing to pay attention to that we're trying to get across was like Cognizant takes care of those horrible, dull lead gen jobs that we all hate um, and gives back time to focus on the marketing jobs that marketers love to do. Um, that's the primary message we're trying to get across in the campaign. That's the overarching message. And then underneath that, like we had a range of like supporting messages. Um, and essentially those are just like the, the boring, like horrible tasks that we can help alleviate. So things like gated content campaigns, list vendors, e-blasts, making them redundant. Um, and that's a whole idea of those support messages just to support the overall message. Um, and I think with this slide, like it's important, I think for us, we think of it, it's not really like a, it's we're not going to translate all of these messages like into our ads word for word, or like it's going to go onto our landing pages. Um, but it's like a framework for us to build our product messaging, to build our ads, to ideate on content. It gives us that foundation and like we know what we're trying to put in the market and we can dress that up however we like in all of our marketing materials. Um, so at this phase, at this stage, yeah, you'd be done at week one. You'd have the what of your campaign, like you know what you're bringing to market, you know what the concept is, you know what message you're trying to get across. Um, the next phase for us was to move into week two, and that's the how. So that's like how are we going to bring the campaign to life? Like how are we going to get that message to market? And that basically means like all what you what content are you going to use? All of your channels, what tactics are you going to use? How are you going to bring this campaign to life? Um, and for us, the fact that we started with our content. Um, so the way that we approach content of Cognizant, all of our content is grouped into buckets. Um, and you can sort of see that here. There's three layers to the content in the campaign. Um, so there's our content and thought leadership bucket at the top there. Um, and this is basically all of like the broad top of the funnel assets that we're going to use to build that, camp that campaign narrative. So before we like talk about Cognizant before we mention our product, these assets are just going to help build the narrative of the campaign. So really identify and draw out the pain of those lead gen jobs that we all hate to do um, and then show what's possible um, when those things don't consume your time and like what's like what's a better way to do marketing, all the things you could be doing. Um, and the whole idea of this bucket of content and all the assets that exist inside of it is just to prime um, our prospects so that when our social proof messaging and our product messaging is introduced, um, that they might be a bit more receptive to it because the idea has already been planted in their head, the campaign's been, the campaign narrative has been built, the idea that is already a seed in their heads. Um, and so you can sort of see like our social proof bucket, all of our testimonies and case studies, just to demonstrate in our customers' own words, all of like the tasks that we alleviate um, and like the freedom that we can give customers and our product bucket. Um, to make that connection between the Cognizant products, our lead generation use case, and the campaign narrative. So educating all the prospects, uh, educating prospects on like, all the lead gen tasks we alleviate, and then hopefully like, pushing them towards like a next action, whether that's like a demo or preferably some further product education. So like um, our prospects can learn about, um, learn about our products um, at their own pace. Um, so that's how we approach content for this campaign. And to show that how that worked in practice for this campaign. Um, so this is our, if we look at our content and thought leadership bucket. Um, so I think the key thing to bear in mind is, is because this campaign, like it's been built in a way where we've done our research, we've used that research to inform like our, our mission and like our concept. And like the whole idea is that we want to find the most effective way to communicate that message and to like get that, that message across. So we're not starting from like a platform first or a channel first sort of like way of thinking. We're not thinking, oh, we need to get to a webinar or we need to get some ads live or we need to get, um, we need to do X activity. We're thinking what is the most effective way to get this across? 
it's the most creative way to get us across. So it gives us scope um, to do things a little bit differently. Um, so for us, the way we approached, like, for example, this bucket of content, we had sort of like a few key assets. Um, we had our content team go away um, and build um, a bunch of long form guides and um, long form blogs that really explained the whole narrative of the campaign and broke that all down. Um, so all of the messages, our overarching um, primary message and all the supporting messages as well. Um, we brought the team in for a recording day um, and we got all the team members to also unpack that message uh, that message in video form and really like get that narrative um, out there in video form as well. Um, we did a live webinar, um, which we did a few weeks back. Um, and that was all about as well, unpacking that key narrative um, in another format, giving it like a, a live dynamic. Um, and then on top of that, we haven't run this yet, but it's coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're doing like a gift and direct mail um, promotion. Um, and that's also linked into the narrative as well. So it like it links into this idea of like uh, the pain and like like the problems behind uh, those old dull legion tasks and what's possible when you're not doing those um, with some meme videos as well. Um, but yeah, this is sort of like you can sort of see how we approach it. So we had those content pieces and then like we spread that across like as many channels as we as we thought were effective as possible based on where our customers hang out so all of those various content pieces are communicating the same message across a multiple of um a multiple channels um, as making as big a splash as possible and helping build that narrative um so that gives you an idea of how, how we approach like content and channels and how we sort of brought the message and the concept uh to life um and then so at this point, like you have your what, you've done your research, uh, you have your how you're going to bring it to life. Um, you move into week three, which is basically building it. Um, so at this point, you're just doing all of the work that you need to do to get launched in week four. So briefing all your design assets, getting all your content pieces briefed that you need to launch, um, writing all your ad copy, your landing pages, your marketing serials, any Gantt charts you need for like deliverables. Um, just get everything ready so you can launch in week three. Um, and just to sort of touch on something else here that Fran mentioned earlier that was important at this stage and slightly earlier. Um, for us, what was really important, there we go, what was really important in this campaign was with all of our creative assets um, and all of our assets in general, we wanted all of them to have like a common visual identity. We wanted them to have like a creative theme. Um, and I suppose the whole idea behind that is that we had this one message that we wanted to distribute and get out there. Um, and like we wanted like if a prospect sees all of our, our assets across different channels and all in different places, the whole idea really is that that creative theme helps to tie those assets together and make that message easier to recall um, and make it more memorable, especially in that short time frame, sort of six to eight weeks where we need to make an impact. Um, so that was sort of like the logic and the thinking. And you can sort of see like with what we did, like we went for like a, it's almost like a cartoon type of theme, really bright, really bold. Um, and like, I think that played quite nicely into the idea of like, like rescuing marketers from B2B boredom. Like it sort of just ties in and reinforces the whole narrative. Um, and that's why we sort of went with that. And we've seen some really good success with that. We've had some really great feedback. Um, and like consider like over time, we've sort of seen like the sort of the impact of the ads and especially our blog pieces as well um and we think that's really helped to tie the campaign together um but yeah so after week three once it's built once everything's um once everything's done all it's left to do is launch um so you launch in week four that was our process um and in week four get it all out there get everything live and then start opening up that feedback loop um and start looking at the numbers and like how you're doing how things are performing and then you can start optimizing mid campaign um but yeah, that's um, that was that was sort of the whole process really from week zero to week four, get everything launched, and that's how we sort of like broke it down. Uh, that's everything from me as well. Um, if you have any questions for me, feel free to put them in the chat. Thanks, guys.